Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First, let me thank those of you who actually tipped me off on Twitter to the fact that an American group, Warriors Boxing, won the purse bid for the James DeGale, Andre Durrell fight. Now that's important because the fight will likely take place in the United States, right? So Andre Durrell is going to have home country advantage. Warriors Boxing is based in Florida, but with a fight of this magnitude and with a purse bid over $3 million, right? The fight could end up anywhere in the United States, right? New York, uh, Las Vegas, uh, you name it. Think big venue, the fight could be there. Now let me say that the location of the fight doesn't change my opinion on who's going to win the fight. Right? In my opinion, we'll just talk styles. In my opinion, Andre Durrell is a mover. Right? He moves around the ring. Now lately, he has become a more in-the-pocket fighter. No question about it. Right? But that's new. That's not second nature to him. Right? His game really has been to move around the ring. Understand, these guys have long histories. Both are Olympic medalists. Right? Durrell won the bronze in 2004. DeGale won the gold in 2008. Just as an aside, Andre Ward won the gold in 2004. So these decorated amateurs now are among the elites in the pros. But understand, inside, and you saw this in the Carl Frotch fight involving Andre Durrell. Inside, Durrell has a habit of doing things that fighters who live inside wouldn't do so in the Carl Frotch fight he would go to a knee right he would he would do things you know Frotch is grabbing and stuff like that Durrell did certain things other than punch his way out shorten his punches make things happen right so in my opinion Durrell likely is going to end up on his back foot in this fight because I believe on the inside, it's a mismatch. I believe James DeGale is widely misunderstood. He's a switch, right? Let's get a little off the grid here. DeGale is a Swiss Army knife in the ring. He can fight you inside. He can fight you outside. He can fight you on his front foot he can fight you on his back foot, right? Both guys like to switch between righty and lefty. James DeGale can actually switch inside, in the middle of a combination, right? Now, let me say this, and I don't say it lightly. We talk about technicians. Let's talk about the alternative to a technician right? If you're a guy who's an energy guy, right? You come in, you soak up the flavor of the crowd, you're in the ring, the crowd is encouraging you to lift your game, and you're in there with extra effort, right? Going all out, right? You know, a lot of energy. I would consider James Kirkland to be an energy guy, Right? He's in the ring enthusiastically, loves to fight, is trying to outmuscle the other guy, is trying to intimidate the other guy. Right? Fighters like that to me, although this doesn't hold with Kirkland, but fighters like that are more vulnerable on the road than technicians. Right? Um, a technician has a completely different approach to fighting, in my opinion, right? The technicians show up and they're thinking angles, 
right? The crowd is really extraneous to them. They're not living off the crowd, right? They're thinking technique. Whatever happens in the ring, they're not panicked, right? They have a plan A, they have a plan B, they have a plan C, right? The crowd could be screaming for them. The crowd could be screaming against them. They're too busy following the formula, right? The formula soaks up their attention. Whether the other guy looks tough, barks at the guy, you know, um, when they're touching gloves before the fight or whatever, doesn't really matter, right? Because as far as they're concerned, they're just going to follow their technique. They're just going to follow the decision tree that they have in their heads. And they're just going to make it work. Right? To me, James DeGale is the highest level technician. Right? He has interpreted the sport from day one as not a sport that requires a lot of athleticism. Even though he is an athlete. Look into his background, you'll find that he used to be a ballet dancer. I'm not making this up, right? He is an athlete. You notice that he has really good, right, foot coordination. In other words, as he moves around the ring, his feet move with him naturally, right? My point to you, though, is that in the ring, the Gale is looking for angles and he's looking to see if he has to fight tall or small, inside or outside, righty or lefty, right? Let me also say too, and I don't say this like, lightly, right? The Gale, I'm sure, knows he's unloved, right? Just like I'm sure Floyd Mayweather knows he's not loved like Ali or Ray Leonard, right? DeGale, a gold medal winner, had to notice when he fought George Groves that the crowd cheered louder for George Groves than it did for him, right? James DeGale is not Kell Brook fighting in Sheffield. Right? He's just not. He's not Manny Pacquiao fighting wherever Manny Pacquiao fights. He knows that the fans respect him, but the fans don't love him. Now understand, if you're a fighter in that position, traveling isn't a problem. Right? I know DeGale wanted the fight in the UK. But understand, when DeGale gets in the ring with Durrell, I think he's just going to be looking at angles. He's going to be going down a mental checklist. Right? The fight won't be so much about how he feels that night as it will be about his level of preparation. Right? Now, let's back up a little bit to a fight that took place that I think people need to revisit. And that's the Arthur Abraham. Andre Durrell fight. Now Durrell gets hit with an illegal shot. That's how the fight ends, right? Durrell is schooling Arthur Abraham. Abraham then hits him with an illegal shot during a break in the action and Durrell hits the canvas. Now at the time, many of us thought that Durrell was acting. Right? In the press, there were stories of, hey, Durrell knew he got hit with an illegal punch and, in a bit of strategy, then decided to pretend that he couldn't continue. What if the opposite is true? I'm telling you that I believe the opposite is true. I don't believe Durrell was acting. Showtime actually did, you know extensive filming for the Super 6 tournament in which that fight took place. And I'm telling you that on the films, right, where you see Durrell going to the hospital and stuff like that, 
I'm telling you that Durrell clearly did not know what had just happened. I'm telling you that Durrell, right, is apologizing to people for a fight that he won. I'm telling you that he was disoriented. Right? He was out of it. Now think about it. He was supposed to fight Andre Ward. Understand, as I make this video, Darrell's only loss in his entire career is a very questionable split decision loss to Carl Frotch in Nottingham, England, in Frotch's backyard. Right? In a fight in which Durrell was the underdog. That's his only loss. If you go back on YouTube, you're going to see that I had picked Frotch before that fight and after the fight made a video, first time I'd done this here on YouTube, where I said, you know what, I was wrong on this fight. Even though the guy I picked was awarded the win. Even this Frotch supporter understood Frotch had lost that fight. So understand the world was bright for Andre Durrell in 2010. If he didn't suffer a significant head injury, significant head injury, he would have been a part of some of the biggest fights at 168 pounds. Now what I want you to consider is just the idea that Durrell is coming back from a significant head injury. That Durrell had to take time off. That a lot of the time off that Durrell had did not involve him being in the gym. Right? Because of the head injury, which prevented the kind of sparring that these guys do. Right, so now Durrell is back. Don't get me wrong. He's very talented. He's very skilled. He looks as good as I have seen him look. Right, he's a juggernaut. But, you know, this is boxing. If he's tested, if he gets tired, let's be clear on his opponent here. James DeGale ends fights, right? Marco Antonio Parabin gets hit to the canvas. Brandon Gonzalez gets hit to the canvas, right? James DeGale can close if he hurts Andre Durrell. And understand, I consider James DeGale to be a much better fighter, much better than Carl Frotch. If James DeGale hurts Andre Durrell, do we know how Andre Durrell is going to respond? You know, I was one of the people looking at the Manny Pacquiao-Brandon Rios fight. This was after Pacquiao had been KO'd by Marquez. And I was wondering what would have happened if Manny got hit flush by Rios. I'm telling you, we've seen many chins after they get knocked out and dented the first time have problems. Does anyone watching this video remember the fight Roy Jones had after he was knocked out by Antonio Tarver? Right? I would argue that Roy Jones hasn't been the same since the Tarver KO. You remember he fought a guy, Glenn Johnson. At the end of that fight, Roy Jones looked like he had been hit by a car. Right? Roy Jones' chin is such that it's all or nothing now. Right? He gets hit hard. When he goes down, he goes down hard. You remember the Dennis Labetta fight? Right? Now, Andre Durrell had a major injury in 2010. Head injury. I understand he's rested. I understand he's back. He hasn't been tested since 2010. 
in the way in which he's going to be tested by James DeGale, who, let me say, is a much better fighter than Arthur Abraham. Right? Let me say this, too. I talked about Durrell's loss. DeGale's loss is curious. Right? George Groves put together the best night of his career. Right? Groves was better against DeGale than he was in either performance. Against Carl Frotch. Understand, back then, Groves had Adam Booth in his corner. As an aside, let me say this. David, hey, you're crazy if you come back and don't have Adam Booth in your corner. Just one man's opinion. But let me get back to this subject, right? Even with George Groves on his game, I believe if most of you watched that fight from start to finish right now, you would conclude that James DeGale won that fight. Right? Let's just say the Groves the Gale fight is close. It's a photo finish. Folks, that's the Gale's only loss. I like James the Gale. I think what's going to happen is Durrell has some new skills that allow him to stay in the pocket, but he's going to find out that new skills don't match old skills in the pocket. Right? I think the Gale is better in the pocket than Durrell. I think Durrell's going to find that out. Then I think he's going to start moving around the ring. Good luck with that against James the Gale. I would argue that the Gale is at his absolute best when he's on his front foot slowly cutting the ring off. Right? I think the Gale takes this fight. I think we're talking about one of the top five fighters in the sport pound for pound, right? Durrell is underrated. Durrell is a man who easily could have been awarded the decision against Carl Frotch in Nottingham, easily, right? Carl Frotch was in no rush to fight Durrell again, right? The problem Durrell is going to have is that he's fighting one of the top five fighters in the sport, pound for pound. I don't care whether the public recognizes it or not. If the public doesn't, great. More bear for me. Longer odds for me. More opportunities for me betting on James DeGale at the casino. There's a reason why Carl Frotch decided to give up a belt rather than fight James DeGale. And think about it, the belt Carl Frotch kept was so perilous that that sanctioning body has ordered him to fight Andre Ward. Right? Think about it. Right? I don't see Frotch hustling here to say, hey, wait a moment, before I fight Ward, let me fight James DeGale. Right? Frotch knows who James DeGale is. Right? I'm telling you, the only question at 168, in my opinion is who wins a DeGale-Andre Ward fight? Who wins a fight between the gold medalist in 2004 and the gold medalist in 2008? That's the question. So, I'm looking forward to this fight against Andre Durrell. It's going to be the sport at a very high level. As I said, Andre Durrell looks great in the ring. It's just that I haven't seen Andre Durrell flash the kind of inside skills, the kind of up and down skills, the kind of punch trajectory skills, throwing punches at different angles that I've seen that James DeGale flash. Understand too, probably the best person in discussing DeGale is Adam Booth, who trained George Groves. Right? Adam Booth in post-fight interviews talked about what he called the Gale's blender, right? In other words, <laughs> Adam Booth understood. You can't fight the Gale inside. He has a blender, right? He can hit you high. He can hit you low. He's hard to hit, right? It's all second nature for him. He's a natural. So the Grove strategy was to move, stay outside, and shoot a jab. Maybe Durrell's planning that strategy. 
All I'm saying is lightning doesn't strike twice. In other words, if there's one fight in James DeGale's career that he likely remembers the most, it's that loss to George Groves, right? I'm sure DeGale has vowed never again, just like George Foreman. Right, knew that he could never be a victim to a rope-a-dope strategy again after the rumble in the jungle against Ali. Right, the Gale will be ready if Durrell tries to move. Understand, moving is for young men. Right, George Grove was in his 20s at the time, not older men. Right, it's a higher wire act to try to move, especially after major head injury, right? I don't think the Gale, excuse me, Durrell could pull off what George Groves did way back when on a magical night, right? But even if he tried, even if he matched what Groves did, I think the Gale will be ready. I'm rolling with James the Gale even on American soil over Andre Durrell. Finally, let me say this. Longtime subscribers know I love purse bids. Right? I'm like, look, I believe fighters are underpaid. Right? Take a look at the purse bid here. Did you know because of the purse bid, each of these guys will be getting more than $1.5 million? Think about it. Right? $1.5 million dollars food for thought let me hear from you leave your comments for me here online visit us at gamblersadvisory.com thanks for stopping by